it's your girl Rachel here and I'm back with Italian Soul Sister. Uh, wait a minute. Today I'm Italian Soul Daughter because I'm here with my mom, Minister Regina. <laughs> That's right, I'll put a handle on it. Anywho, we're going to make something yummy for you today. Tell us what we're going to make, Mom. We're going to make vegetable lasagna. My favorite. Mmm. All right. And we're going to make fried fish to go along with it. We love a good fish fry over yes, here. Yes, we do. That's right. Today you're going to get twice the meals and twice the fun. Right? Mm, right. So, so let's, let's get, get started. started. Okay guys, here's what you'll need for our vegetable lasagna. We're going to need some spinach. I just used the dull spinach. Uh, is it baby? It's regular spinach. It's not even baby spinach. You're going to need some mushrooms. These are sliced organic mini bellas. I guess portabella. You're going to need one medium size bell pepper. It could be yellow, it could be red, this one happens to be orange, it can be anything that you have. I wouldn't suggest green though because the spinach is green and so if you have a different color other than green bell pepper, it'll just make the dish look beautiful. You use, I'm using one sweet onion and one regular yellow cooking onion that I'm going to sweat down with the spinach. I'm using Meyer Bread Italian Cheese. This cheese actually has five different cheeses already included in it. We have a mozzarella, smoked parvolone, asiago, parmesan, romano, and fontina. That's actually more than five. But I use that because I'm getting everything bang for my buck in there. And I also hate grating cheese and all that. Hey, if you can buy it already done, you know what my motto is. We have two cans of diced tomatoes here. Why? Because sparsely when we're making our layers, I'm going to put the diced tomatoes. I won't use any of the juice that this is in because I don't want to discolor my sauce, but I am going to dish the uh, cut up diced tomatoes out of there. I have two ragu, ragu alfredo sauces that I'm going to use as my base. I have cream cheese that I'm also going to use to kick it up a notch the sauces. Butter, I'll use a stick. Heavy whipping cream, I'll use a full cup of this. We have the fish. We have two types of fishes here, watch the juice. Two types of fishes here, we have sway and we have Pollock fish. That's just something I, I was just using what I had, guys. And we have curly leaf parsley here. And we're going to move on to our spices. We have black pepper. That's a coarse grated type of black pepper. We have the Italian chop house seasoning. And you guys saw when I used that in my last lasagna video that I love that stuff. We're using a little bit of Hawaiian red sauce because as I explained before, that chop house seasoning needs just a pinch more of sodium to it. We're going to use cayenne pepper. Italian seasonings, garlic powder, and smoked paprika. You guys know I use that on everything. Okay guys, we're going to get started. Also, you will need one full box of lasagna noodles. And I'm going to get started and putting those on the water. And my mom's going to get started chopping up some of these vegetables. Mm -hmm. And we'll be right back guys. Give me a knife. Okay. Yep. So, my mom is cutting up the curly leaf parsley now. These are some really sharp knives. I can appreciate that. I got those knives from Sam's Club. That is the Martha Stewart collection. And believe it or not, guys, these knives were actually very reasonably priced. I think the whole set, feature block and everything, was something like 50 bucks. Oh, that is cheap. Mm -hmm. But what I do is, because I learned from getting old knife sets, I don't put them in a the dishwasher. 
I wash them by I wash them with a little wash brush every time I use them. I don't put them in the dishwasher. That way they don't ever get uh, those stains of rust. Okay, my, not the stems. Not the stems? Mm -hmm. Okay. Even though the stems are edible, guys, don't get me wrong, but it's more unpleasant in the palate. Okay. So, am I chopping this mm -hmm. right? Okay. Perfect. And then once you get them all chopped that way, just go straight down them that way to make them bite size. We want everything to fit on our pork, pork neatly so it eats well, guys. Okay. While you're doing that, Mom, I'm going to go ahead and put some oil in the pan. So we okay. get ready to saute this fish. Okay. So my daughter just taught me something that I didn't know about um, uncooked lasagna. She puts her lasagna in the water before it begins to boil. Everything, and pasta, said, lasagna, everything. He says it, it still cooks up the same. It does. I did not know that. Good to know. I usually have to think I have to wait for it to boil, and then I'll put my uh, pasta in with my salt in the water. But you don't have to wait. No, you do not. Okay. I ain't got no patience for all that waiting. They say a watch pot never boils, guys. I don't know if it's true, but <laughs> well, it seems like it never does. Well, we're having fun. Yes, we are. I always have fun with my daughters. Yes, we do. I'd be like a big kid sometimes with them. Because we just laugh and just have a good time enjoying life. This is true. And those bigger ones. Come down. Bigger? Yeah. Okay. It's come down like a rough. Oh, like this? Yeah. Okay. Like that. So that Is you that get done? a whole one on it. Yep. You don't okay. that. Okay. And then just do the onions, and then I'm gonna do those with this. All right. And I'm gonna them together over here. So don't I cut those onions up so small. Okay, not so small. Yeah. So you have to come over here and look at and see where if, if is that too okay, big or so too little? No, you put the flat. Uh, guys, always put the flat side of the onion down so it doesn't roll and have all that give, and you don't make a mistake and cut your finger. And then you're just gonna slice. Okay. So you just want to cut it in so that now. it eats. When you get a piece of this and this on your fork, it'll eat well. Okay. So you actually just cut it in half. Just and slice. Okay, yep. and that's it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'm going to saute them up just like okay. that and I'll break them oh, apart excellent. before I put them in the pot. Okay, I can do, mm -hmm. I can, I can yeah. do that. You got it. That's easy. You learn something new every day. I don't mind learning stuff new. I love it. What I hate doing, guys, is change. I am resistant. So she says, I don't like it. So she says, I'm telling you, I'm not a fan of that change business. And then when she gets in it, she loves it. I didn't say I didn't have adaptability, that I couldn't change. I said I'm resistant to it. Okay. Well, I can understand that. Most people are. Yep. True. Okay, so I guess that's all of the chopping. Okay, we got the vegetables chopped up. Now, guys, we're about to go over here to the stove and we're going to get the spinach sauteed. We're going to get the mushroom sauteed. We're going to saute the spinach and the onions together. You guys are getting ready to see what's going on over here. Let's get started. All right, guys, we're going to start here by sauteing our onions and our spinach. All right, that's better. Okay, so, ooh, what did I do with the onions? My, my mom, while I'm doing the saute and the onions and spinach, she's going to start with the sauce. Mom put the Alfredo sauce in our sauce pot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I'm going to throw the onions in here so I can saute the spinach, but the onions have to sweat a little bit first. Mom, you can go ahead and get the second jar of sauce. Okay. 
in there because that's our base. I'll actually split the onions and the peppers together today. I'm going to put a little butter in there. I've already sprayed the bottom of the pan with olive oil. My, my mom is going to add one cup of heavy whipping cream to this sauce. Okay. I'm so glad I got an extra different camera now. When, my, when somebody called me and don't interrupt my video no more. <laughs> one cup of uh, heavy whipping cream. Right? Yes. Right there into the sauce. You got well, to see. Nobody's on the diet. Oh, oh no. I just blew it. With That's it. right. Yeah. Oh, no. These, these are not diet meals, folks. These are Italian-inspired foods, okay? And my daughter has loved Italian food ever since she was a little girl. What would you say was my... When did you... When would you say I started loving... Pasta and my love for Italian food started, Mom. When you had two teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Already getting after it. Already getting after it. Oh my goodness. Okay, Mom, you're gonna go ahead and put your put your uh gonna put your cream cheese into your sauce because you want it to start now. How much how much cream cheese? You're gonna put that whole thing. Oh, the whole thing. oh yes. Alrighty. We don't skimp here All right. in the Italian soul food kitchen. Alright. <laughs> yep. Hold that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somebody gonna have to run around the block after this one. Oh, it won't be me. Somebody <laughs> else. <laughs> somebody else. Either. I don't want oh, any part of this jogging regimen. I don't know who it's gonna be. Mm. Somebody. Now I'm about to drive you all the way crazy and make you put a stick of butter in it. Uh oh. Mm hmm. Just that's how we do it. All right, I'm Paula sorry. Dean. That's how we do it. Hey, Paula Dean got the right idea. So she this is, is not successful the, uh, for nothing. This mm -hmm. is going into the uh, sauce. Sauce. Yep. Okay. And then you wow. Season your sauce. Because we season everything, every bite of everything. Okay. I like it already. Mm hmm Oh, it's going to be delicious for us. Mm-hmm. I'm going to turn your fire up just a little bit. I'm telling you, YouTube family, you certainly can learn stuff from your kids. Because I've never, ever made this before in my entire life. So oh. she's teaching me something new as well, guys. Oh, it's tasty. The problem is you just don't know all the fat that goes into what's so tasty, <laughs> right? Lord, have mercy. But hey, I was telling you, uh, for all you single ladies out there, I'm not judging. I'm a single person myself. But what I'm telling you is, if you've never been married, maybe you just need to step up your lasagna game. Maybe that's all it's going to take. <laughs> I'm just joking, folks. You know I'm being silly. So, oh, no, no. we have to get our lasagna game together. Mm -hmm. As soon as these onions are translucent, I'm going to go ahead and throw in my, um, my, um, Mushrooms here. I don't know. I think that my daughter's got a point about this cooking now. Mm -hmm. And guys, they love a good meal. They say it's the quickest way. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. I know I'm just my adding my seasoning. My spaghetti. Hey, hey, it's still better than mine. It's still one of the best spaghettis I ever tasted. I don't know if it's childhood nostalgia or what it is, but it tastes so good, people. Oh, thank you, honey. Mm-hmm. To where I got my recipe from. Well, my grandkids love it. And my mm -hmm. husband loves it, too. What's not to love? But they, they're, they're pasta lovers, though, you two family. They really are pasta lovers. We are. Yeah. 
We love it. We're seasoning the sauce a little bit what, because what, what we season is that? This is the Italian chop house seasoning, okay. and it just has sea salt and and uh, everything you really need. Oregano. In one season, oregano, basil, everything you need, okay. all in one seasoning. Okay. I'm also seasoning my onions, folks, because once I put this, um, once I put the spinach into this pot, it's gonna be difficult to season it, right? Because spinach is a whole leaf and it's so big in the pot, it's more harder. So it's better just to season now, okay, and then mix it all together. All right. I use a little bit of this uh, Hawaiian sea salt with it because it needs it. Okay. A little bit. I'm going to actually put a little bit in her sauce too. Okay. Because it just requires a little bit. Is that your phone singing, Mama? That is my phone. That's my reminder. Oh, okay. What, are you, what were you supposed to remember? Uh, that our, our Facebook Live service is on this. Oh, okay. <laughs> what are you, did you recall it? Because... Hey, Bishop and co-pastor. Oh, <laughs> this is what I'm doing. Right? So, oh wow, this is, is really going to come out creamy. Mm-hmm, it's going to be super creamy. Mmm. Let me take care of it. Oh, okay, no now. problem. Okay, guys, we're almost there. We're almost there. And I don't know if I mentioned, but these are actually oven ready noodles. But I put my oven ready noodles in the water because if you just make them regular, then you have to accommodate it with more sauce in your lasagna because the oven ready noodles do suck up the sauce to make them soft. So if you just put those dry planks at the bottom of your pan, you have to be mindful of the fact that those planks are going to eat up some of your sauce. So that's the reason why I do boil oven ready noodles. Because I don't want no dry lasagna. I don't care for it. Let me throw, now we're gonna go ahead and add these onions. Our, I mean these mushrooms. As you can see, our onions and our bell peppers are nice and translucent. They're good and beautiful here. And they so smell now, so good. Mm -hmm, this kitchen is smelling awesome, guys. Mm -hmm. Now we're ready. So I'm throw so all good. those on those nice mushrooms in there. Ooh wee! And it's so great to have the mushrooms too because they're brown on the top. So when you make your layers, not only do you get the green spinach. The orange bell pepper and those white onions, you also get the brown and that earthy tone from the mushrooms too. And if you're anything like me guys, you eat with your eyes first. You know what I'm saying? So I love to bite into something that's got multiple colors, multiple depth to it. Can I show them what's in your skillet? Mm-hmm. This looks like something that you could put on top of a hamburger. Mm -hmm. It would be delicious. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to so put any meat in this. This is all vegetables today. It's not to so be confused with vegetarian because we use in butter and cheese. Mm -hmm. Smells so good. Mm -hmm. Making me hungry. I'm telling you. By the time we're done, you're going to be ready to eat. I didn't splash your hands. No, you did. Okay. Okay, so we're going to let these, uh, these uh, mushrooms saute just for a few more seconds because I don't want them too soft because this is all going in the oven. And we have to re remember our temperatures. The sauce is going to be warm. This is going to be warm before we combine everything. And then you're going to put them into a hot oven and it's going to cook even further. So we don't want to cook our vegetables and stuff too much. Because they're going to continue the cooking process once you put it in the oven. And you have to remain mindful of that. You don't want to make mush. Vegetables are so easy to become mush when you overcook things. Mm -hmm. And we don't want that to happen. Now, folks, we're going to go ahead and add our, add our um, spinach. A lot of you guys out here will say, well, why do you use fresh spinach? Because... 
I know I saw a lot of different vegetable lasagna YouTube videos, right? And everybody uses either frozen spinach, spinach in a can, spinach like this and that. And very few people use fresh spinach. Me, I always use fresh spinach because I like to eat it this way. I saute it. I don't eat, you know, I eat it raw too in salads, but when I'm cooking it for dinner, I always saute the spinach. So for me, this is no trouble just to use it fresh. This is what I always do. I think fresh is better anyway. Well, it's less work. And you guys know me, right? I always like everything washed, ready-made, cut up, ready. You know, I don't like all that work. And when you use it uh, frozen or canned or whatever, you got to remove the stems. Yeah. But if you use it fresh, you're going to saute those stems tender. So you don't have to get out a strainer and strain it. You don't have to repick through it to set out the stems or nothing. It's perfect already because you made it fresh. So it's just easier, guys. For me, it's a convenience thing. And I told you, I don't know how many moms watch this channel, but we can take, we can use all the help we can get, guys. Man, that smells so good. It's almost like you could actually use that as a side dish. Mm -hmm. It smells so good. Well, that's why we're going to fry fish Delicious. today, because we are going to use this as a side dish. <laughs> well, not just this, but... Yeah, it looks good. Oh, yeah. It's going to be good, too. When we mix it all together, it's going to be delicious. Mm -hmm. See how quickly that fresh spinach wilts? It takes no time. But if you had used frozen, you'd be over at the sink, sipping it through. Then the frozen holds so much water. Look how dry the spinach is. There's no water in that. It holds so much water that you got to squeeze fresh spinach out first so that you don't get a soggy waterlogged spinach in your stuff. And how easy is this? Look, I'm not, I don't have to cut it. I ain't got to wash it. Dump. Easy. Just dump it right in there, no problem. And the more spinach, the merrier. Oh yeah, because you have to have enough for all the layers. This seems like a lot. It seems like two bags. Oh, she got a whole lot of spinach making that stuff. It actually wilts down to half yeah. of what those bags look like. Sure. I make this all the time, guys. And I am in the union. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's going to shrink. Okay, so that's the last of our spinach, okay. and we're going to get ready to put our layers together. Mm. When we come back, guys, we will have our lasagna pan here and be ready to make our layers. Be right back. Okay, YouTube family, I just wanted you to see really quickly here about how I'm going to combine the spinach and the sauce together to create a slurry. So when I make my layers over here, is I just have to ladle it forward. Okay, so we got everything all nice and melty in our sauce here, and we're going to go ahead and pour it right into the spinach. This is what I was talking about with the temperatures, guys. How you don't want to overcook your spinach or your vegetables because you're going to pour hot sauce on them, you're going to put them in the hot oven, and whatever you do, you don't want to make mush. Okay? That's the most important thing. That everything has a good bite and a good taste and it eats easily. Mm hmm Look at that. Look at those vegetables. They just swimming in there like a creamy veggie bath. Mm-hmm. We're having fun. These vegetables are on vacation, y'all. <laughs> they on vacation, floating by the pool. Mm-hmm. But the shark is coming. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The shark is coming. Uh-oh. Isn't that something? Okay, guys, we're going to put this down, and we're going to get ready to prepare our layers. Be right back. Okay. Okay, guys, now I'm going to make my layers. Before I get started, 
As usual, I'm going to put a little olive oil at the bottom of the pan. These noodles have some water in them, so they will come up easily, but we don't want to take any chances. We want to make sure everything does not stick. I don't know where you want these to Now, uh, I'm just going to make them part of my little, my little station here. Okay. Put them right here. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. Can you give me a spoon, a tablespoon or something out of here? This pan holds exactly four layers at the bottom here. This one is a little ripped up, so this will be an overlap. And you're going to overlap your layers a little so that all your sauce ain't falling all to the bottom of your pan. Like so. And then you're going to throw in your slurry. I call this my slurry, y'all. Mm -mm. Okay. Let me get a little there, but I'm going to clean it. Don't forget guys, this lasagna will suck up some of this sauce. So that's the reason why we use two jars, because we don't want to dry lasagna here. No, we don't. Mm -mm. Nobody likes that. Okay. And then I'm going to put on my tomatoes and my cheese. Remember how I talked about those two cans of diced tomatoes? They've been drained and now they're ready. And these are little acid bombs, right? Because when you have a sauce that's that thick and that rich, you need the acid from the tomatoes so that it breaks that party up and it lifts the dish up. You don't want to just keep it all thick and cheesy and savory and although we love cheese and that's wonderful, we want to also make the dish well rounded. Okay. Here comes the cheese guys. Say cheese please. Say cheese. I know I use pepperoni on everything but I don't use it in this. This here is strictly veggies. But not to be confused with vegetarian. It is not vegetarian. It is not vegan because we're using a ton of butter, a ton of cheese, ton of cream. We're using everything that vegetarians or vegan vegetarians anyway cannot eat. Do not eat rather. So they don't want none of this action. More for me. Me too. How many layers of lemon? This pan holds exactly three layers, guys. Oh, okay. And it's a reason for why I make the layers like this because you want to put your sauce directly onto the noodles because the noodles will suck up more sauce. So that's the reason why. The layers go in a certain order. It smells so good. I wish uh, mm -hmm. I wish you two had scent scent smell a vision. Uh, yeah, smell a vision. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could put it on anything. Mix some chicken in there. Oh put it goodness. on some spaghetti pasta, some penne pasta, anything. Mm -hmm. It's a good backdrop. Oh, yeah. Or you can just make lasagna out of it and let it be a star all on its own like I'm doing today. Mm-hmm. Because it can take it now. I can see. You, it probably would really be good on a rotisserie chicken as well. Mm-hmm. Chop that boy up. Put it on, up in here. Mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't even chop it up. I'd chop it in half and pour it on there. Ooh, let that's it go to town. delicious. Ooh. Because it is really smelling and looking good. Mm-hmm. I'll eat that rotisserie chicken mm -hmm. business. I would too. 
and have some for the next day. And I know you guys are thinking, do I have to have the tomatoes? Well, what I would say is, if you try it for the first time, make it with the tomatoes. And then try it making without the tomatoes and see the difference. And then you'll understand what I'm saying. Needs the acid, guys. All this thick white sauce, it needs the acid. Lifts it up. I won't scare you guys wrong because I'm in the union now. I'm telling you, I'm in the lasagna Italian union. If it's such a thing, which I'm sure it's not. Okay. <laughs> and you may not know this either, but it's important to have enough sauce because this cheese will thicken the sauce as it melts. Mm, yeah. It'll also cause the sauce to be tighter. You know, not as loose as when I put it in there. All things have to be considered, and it's all for a reason the way I do this. Okay, guys, I'm going to do my last. My last little layers here. Oh, that one ripped up a little bit. I'm going to overlap it, and it'll be fine. Lift up a little bit. If I have to make five up here, I can do that because I'm not sweating the flaws, guys. I'm not going to sweat. Mm -mm. So what should the oven be on? 400. We're going to put the oven on 400 degrees. You can go ahead and set it, Ma. Okay, and we're going to do it on 450 degrees for 15 minutes. You're going to push bake. Mm -hmm. You're going to push the up button until you get to 450. Okay. Everybody's oven is different. Yes, they are. And again, you guys know I always squeeze my lasagna like this because this way you get the, and then just push start. Okay. Mm -hmm. I squeeze it because I don't want air down in there and then the air heat up and then when air heats up and it's packed into your lasagna, it pops. And then you get cheese and overflow sauce all in your bottom of your oven and stuff. You may just want to just give it a little gentle oh, press right. here. Just to prevent that, because we, we don't like cleaning up around here. We don't like cleaning up junk. I mean, we do it, but who likes it? She ain't in that union. Mm-mm. <laughs> mm-mm. No. Who likes it? Not me. I would certainly prefer not to if I don't have to. Really just, I'm just joking. She's really um, a neat nick. Well, I don't like to clean up is the point. I like to keep it neat if I can. Do things so you can keep it neat. And that's what pressing a lasagna is. It's a preventative measure. Okay. Okay. Oh, I gotta get my tomatoes. I guess for people who don't like tomatoes or are allergic to tomatoes, this part you can just take this part out. You can just not do this part. And I drain the tomatoes and make sure that I don't put the juice of the tomatoes in there simply for the beauty of the dish. I like tomato juice, sure. But I don't want it to tint my sauce. I want my sauce to be green tinged, mushroom tinged. I want the color of the vegetables to be what shines in the sauce. Not red juice tinged and the whole sauce is off color. Mm -mm. Now we put the fresh parsley in the sauce guys. I think I omitted to show that part. But it's already fresh parsley in here. And so just for, uh, I don't even think I even have any uh, fake parsley, but that's okay. Just for the greenness, we're going to put a little bit of, a little bit of Italian seasoning right down the middle here. 
just to break that white up. Because again, if you guys are like me, you eat with your eyes. Okay, guys. It's looking good. You're going to put it in the oven. I like to, when I cook lasagnas or pastas in these type of tins, before I put it in the oven, I like to turn it up a little bit. Again, another measure to save the bottom of my oven. I don't want anything to boil over and fall into my oven. I've reinforced the bottom of this with a metal sheet so that the uh, sheet pan, the lasagna pan, doesn't collapse on me or make a mess. And I throw it right here in the oven. Now, we're going to get things together. And when we come back, guys, we're going to show you how to do this, fry up this fish, shallow pan fry this fish up real quick. Be right back. Hey YouTube family, so now we're getting ready to do our fish fry, y'all. This is super easy peasy Japanese. -y. Okay, so I'm using the Xanaran's fish fry. I use this all the time. I use this for if I'm going to do a dry batter, and then I do the Drake's if I'm going to do a wet batter. But anyway, we're going to do a dry a cornmeal batter today, so I'm going to use this. And I like my fish spicy. So, even though I'm using already pre-seasoned cornmeal, I don't know if I showed y'all that, it's seasoned, seasoned fish fry. So, that means it already contains sodium. I use some other spices that don't have salt in them because I want it a little more, I want a little heat on it. So, yes, I put cayenne pepper, mm. even though there's already some in the mix. I do put it on here. And if you think it's going to be hot or too hot, it's not going to be hot, y'all. I promise. It's not going to be too hot. Something about the What's oil that? takes on the characteristics. This is a smoked paprika. Oh, okay. I just like my fish to smell smoky. I don't know, y'all. It's my thing. And garlic powder. Mm. And I'm a garlic lover. I Me love too. the smell of garlic all the time. Me too. Okay, guys. And our oil does not look like it's ready. And what I do to test my oil, I know so many professional cooks and chefs or whatever have thermometers. I don't do that. I take a little pinch of the cornmeal in my hand and I drop it in my oil. See how that didn't pop or sizzle? I know that oil is not hot enough. I do not have or own those fancy gadgets for that. I've just been cooking too long, y'all. It's just I know all the tricks. No, I don't use a little water. People flick water into the hot oil. I don't feel oh like burning God. myself. Right. Yes, that's a way to tell if the oil is hot enough, but who feels like getting a third degree burn on their arm or something just to put some liquid crap in there? Mm -mm. Say, oh yeah, it's hot. Mm -mm. If I was doing a wet batter on this fish or frying some shrimp, so battered up shrimp or something, I would take the spoon that I mixed the batter with and put one dot of the batter into the oil to see if it sizzles. That's how I do it. Whatever I'm frying, I use a little bit of the thing that I'm frying to test the oil. That's mm -hmm. what I do. Me too. I've seen all kind of things and heard <laughs> all kind of ways. And guys, I am a nurse. I'm all about safety, folks. Let's not... Please let's not burn ourselves up and have to get a tattoo to cover up the third degree <laughs> scar tissue from just frying some fish or something. Let's not do that, guys. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, that was a whole unnecessary scenario. We'll be right back as soon as this grease gets hot enough. Okay, guys, we're back, and our oil is nice and hot. See? Here's a little baby pinch of the flour, the mix. Throw it in there. See? It's frying furiously. So now we know things are ready to go here. We're going to get our fish. Yes, I only seasoned it on one side. Why you didn't season it on both sides? Because I just never do. The, flour, the, the cornmeal is already seasoned, and I feel that... It's overkill. So I just do the one side. Shake off the excess because you don't want to thick old bread in on your fish, do you? No, nobody likes that. 
going to flip over. This pan holds two fish at a time, which is fine because the two different types of fish. I have the sway here, and I have the um, this was the small one, and I have the um, pollock or pollock or however you say it. I don't know. He cooks pretty fast. Mm -hmm. So, I let those sit too long in the batter because one or a little bit of it came off. You never do that when it absorbs too much water. One thing I, I never did before that I saw that you are do with your fish is using the uh, pre-season uh, cornmeal mix of Zatarain. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to try it. I think Just that's to see how it flow. goes. You yeah. don't like it. You don't even have, I add extra seasoning to it, but you don't have to. The fish is good without it. It honestly is. Still tastes I'm going to try it. Because I'm, I'm used to the old-fashioned way, you know, seasoning your fish. Then do your little cornmeal, you know, mm -hmm. maybe add a little cornstarch to it to make it thicker, but not a whole lot. And then I fry it, but I'm kind of liking this mm -hmm. pre-season deal. Hey, it's not a lot of, you take all the work out of something, why not? Take all the guesswork out of it, why not? Yeah, I'm just kind of liking that. Mm -hmm. Let me flip it over here. I left it in the cornmeal sitting too long. I shouldn't have done that until I was ready to fry it because it's too thick on one side. Oh, okay. That's why I was rubbing these pieces to get the excess water thickness off. Mm -hmm. But they're going to be tasty, guys. I was just going to say, it still looks good to me. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to eat it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be good, too. Let's check on our lasagna a little bit. Almost, we need some brown pieces, some brown in them there. But it's almost ready, guys. We're it on 400. That's not the problem, is it? Okay. So it doesn't go on 400? Mm-mm, it's 450 for 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Because when the temperature is too low, when you put it on there, instead of browning and just melting the cheese like it should, it's having too long that it's recooking all the noodles and all the ingredients. Right. And you want it to cook faster, not longer, because okay. you don't want to soggy up your vegetables right. and everything. So then you need to add extra time for that? No, 450 should do it. And we're just going to leave it in there five more minutes. Okay. We're going to still stick to the 15 minute time. Okay. Because anything over that, we'll start to we cook those vegetables and we don't want it gross. Okay. It's hot over here, ain't it? That's why I didn't want to eat the oven, because imagine if they had all that time. It can be too hot. And so, guys, you may think, how do you know when fish is ready when you got it in here? What's a trick that you would know that it's ready to take it off? Because you can't always go by color because sometimes when it's got a lot of color on it, it's overcooked. The fish is dry and overcooked on the inside. How you know is because when it's still hitting the bottom of the pan, when the fish floats, it's ready. If it's still heavy, see how this piece is heavy, how it's still, but if I nudged it like that and it floated all the way to the other side, I would know it was done. That's just a, a quick thumb of what us home cooks use to know if something is ready to take it out of the oven, okay. out of the grease. Do I put a thermometer in there? No. I know because if it floats, it's ready. Okay. And don't worry guys, I'll be frying fish and shrimp and stuff on here and chicken many times, but it works, that trick works with every single protein that you make. 
with chicken. How you know your wings done? If you push it and it floats across the pan, it's ready. Mm -hmm. Does it stay in depth? Nope. Anything fried? This one is acting like it's a floater, but it's cracked right there, so it could be forced. Because it's getting air and oil up in there, so it's more like, but see, this side is still big. It's not moving as easy. It's one of those things, guys, and, and, and where any cooking practice makes perfect, right? So the more you do it, the easier it will become, the better you'll be at it, and it'll be no sweat. No sweat. Okay, guys, so we're going to finish frying this fish up and check on this lasagna and get ready to take it out and let it cool, let this fish cool down and make our plates. Okay, and give you guys the first bite of what's going on here. Be right back. Okay, guys, yum, yum, yum. Looky here, we have our vegetable lasagna out of the oven, nice and beautiful golden brown. And now I'm going to make me and mom a plate and we're going to let you guys have the first bite and tell you how it tastes. Check it out, folks. I'm getting the first bite. She getting the first <laughs> bite. Check it out, folks. Hey YouTube family, so we're all done. Let's show you what goodness looks like. We have our fried fish here. We have our our um, vegetable lasagna here. And look mm -hmm. at that. Look at that. First of all, you got cheese pulls all here on the side. And then you have layers. Nice and toasty brown here. Nice spinach. Nice mushrooms. You got your tomato pieces all in there. Oh, it's a matter of fact. Show them, Mom. It is a matter of fact. Mm. Let's get a bite. Let's cut into this thing here. I'm ready. Oh, that's sad, bless Mom, we, she's going to say a blessing and she's going to bless all you homes out there for our YouTube extended family also. Okay. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this food we're about to receive. Take out all the poison and impurities, make it helpful and delicious and nourishing for our bodies to receive. And bless all of our YouTube family out there. Yes. That Lord, that they have a wonderful meal and peace in their homes yes, Lord. and in their hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Here we go. Here we go. Mmm. Look at it. Mmm. Focus on that. That's so good. Oh yeah. Oh man. Get good. into it. It's so hot it's steaming up my lens a little bit, y'all. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mm. That's delicious. Mm. That really is good. Mm -hmm. That really is good. I'm going to take one more bite. We ain't going to get too greedy on y'all here now. I don't know no. how much. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to get one more bite. Before I come out here. Mm. Mm. The flavor is so good. And the tomatoes do really add that brightness. They do. They mm -hmm. lift it. Mmm. Mmm. Need the acid. Not a vegetarian. Mm. But this will almost make me want to be one. Mm. <laughs> so it's, it's so good. Down. It's really tasty. It really you got is. everything all in it's that delicious. one dish. And it's then, delicious. You better get into this, guys. Don't you miss out. Until next time, we love you. Bye. I got to show you all my fish. <laughs> Her fish. <laughs> bye. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Say bye, Mom. Bye. bye.